All right, folks. Once again, I'm back. And Jonathan, see, we're Wendy's not with us. She's um, got some other obligations today. Jonathan is here with us. But if he was standing right next to me like normal, he'd be poking me, going, "It's a tease, Bill. Get on with it." <laughs> oh yeah, come on, come on, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> so we are uh, Carolina Capital Management. Thank you so much for joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show. Hard money for real estate investors. Like I said, we are Carolina Capital Management. We are lenders in the Southeast. If you're interested in borrowing any money, uh, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns then click on the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell. And as always, don't forget to sign up with Wednesday with Wendy. Wendy devotes Wednesdays and she will give anyone who wants to talk about real estate 30 minutes of her time. And you can schedule those bookings right over here in the comment section, either to the right or below your screen, depending on the platform that you're viewing us from. Uh, she's usually booked out a couple of months in advance. So go ahead and do it while you can. Whew. All right. That was a lot to say. Bill, how, how's the hotel life? Um, yeah, I'm, it's fun and all that. And we, we get to do a, a, a pool hangout networking day today. Um, been here every day. It's been in the eighties and sunny and the pool day today, it's cloudy. So, uh, hopefully it'll still be in the eighties, <laughs> but I'll be ready to go, uh, after today. Uh, you know how traveling is. It's fun when it starts. No, no, that's right. That's right. You're happy you, to get uh, up. Do you have any uh, breaking news or any housekeeping items you want to take care of before we bring Mr. Richter on? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I haven't been really paying attention to uh, <laughs> the breaking news this week. I've been paying attention to learning as much as I can because we're down here at Collective Genius. And speaking of Collective Genius, one of our Collective Genius buddies is joining us. David Richter, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Bill. Thanks for having me. And yeah, it was good seeing you this week. Yeah. Well, listen, every time I come to Collective Genius, I always come back with uh, great information. Some Sometimes more than others, but uh, I, I, I try to make every one because I'm so afraid I'm going to miss something otherwise. Right. Yeah. It's always great information there. Well, and, and then again, not strictly about the information, but it's the, the networking and being around people that are going to constantly elevate your game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that I, I'm a living testament to that of just networking and being around great people. Yeah. It, it's nice because uh, it, it raises the bar for, for all of us. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to go back into my, my story, but uh, just for, for quickly when, when I was in my other life as a, uh, worker B in the mortgage industry, I was pretty much satisfied with where I was. And uh, until I got, uh, you know, around people that are constantly elevating me, uh, I don't know where I'd be right now. I'd just be a lush. <laughs> 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 I'd, I'd just be a big, big ball of goo sitting on a couch after work. And that would be it. So yeah, I, I'm happy for it. So uh, David, before we get to uh, your book uh, that is, uh, just been released. Uh, talk to us about uh, how you got started in real estate and then got started over into the finance side of things. Sure. So I read someone gave me a good friend, gave me rich dad, poor dad in college. So that was about 11 years ago now. And I read that book, bought a house right away, you know, like, cause I wanted to actually implement the, the advice and that house became a good cash machine for me. I rented it out first. And actually lived in it. Then two years later, I uh, lease option the property once I moved out and the tenant paid early, then cashed me out six months, you know, like later. And that was an awesome experience. I also, during that time, started working with a real estate investing company that where the first eight months, like I just worked on the side basically as a volunteer, like I just want to learn more about the real estate investing world. And that's where I got into 
actually seeing high volume and whatnot. And because then once I officially came on board with them, we took that company from like five deals a month, to about 25 or 30 deals a month. And I got to sit in every seat in that company as well, too, from acquisitions, dispositions, project management, property management, you know, the transaction coordination, finance, you know, like all those different seats. So I got to see not only like a real estate company and like buying deals and like the formulas and how we did all of that and acquisitions, but also just small business and how it's run. Mm -hmm. And that's where I, one of the last seats I sat in. So that was kind of like my introduction to real estate and like getting heavily into it. One of the last seats I sat in was that finance seat. That was another eye opening moment to me. Cause now I saw the money going, you know, coming in and going out and like all where and how it all flowed and, just being able to learn that position. And we were doing 25 deals a month, which sounds amazing. Like our, our highest year, we did over 300 deals in a year. And, you know, that sounds awesome. But as much as was, you know, coming in, that much or more was going out every month. So we'd have six, seven figure months. And sometimes it would be that on the expense side too. So it's like, we were just spinning our wheels. And I know a lot of investors get into that position, but it was just humbling to see it you know, firsthand and see like that going on. I'm like, why are we doing this? Like, why are we spinning our wheels? So that's kind of what got me interested on the financial side and being like, I bet you there's a lot more people like this that just need help getting into a better cash position or just managing that cash. So that's kind of what got me into the, the first spark of like, I think there's a need here. Then I actually moved across the country because at that time behind the scenes, I'd built a little portfolio, sold a bunch of those off and then could live anywhere, move closer to family, but started working with another investor. And the first thing I did was like, show me your numbers. Like, I don't, I don't want to see anything else. I don't care how many deals you're doing. I just care about like the numbers behind the scenes. And, you know, cause that data gives me the knowledge of what's really happening, but there were no numbers. Like the stuff that was there was a mess. So I saw there, there was another big need of like, like just getting the numbers in order. So that was to me, we got that done, taken care of. And then from there, saw that a bunch of his money was tied up in properties. Like he was only leveraged at like 25, 30% of his portfolio that he had. And like, he was wondering where all his money went. And I'm like, well, now that we have the numbers there, it is like, it's tied up in a lot of the properties and you dumped a lot of your money into it. And that's where he said to me, like, this is life changing because I have control over my business now by knowing these numbers. And like I, he did, he took a bunch of the cash out to go and do more investing. And he's like, this has given me just a lot more freedom to be able to do that. And that was the, that's why I made the leap from real estate investing to like helping real estate investors with the finances. Cause now I was like, now I've got the bug of, if I can help this on one time, I could do this again and like help people with this and not live deal to deal. And that's what got me interested in the financial side. You know, it's amazing what knowing the numbers can do for you Yeah, <laughs> and, and understanding the, you know, the KPIs, Jonathan, I know you have an opinion on growing to be growing. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like I, I say it all the time, you know, you, when you, you scale unresponsibly, you're, you're creating a machine that you have to feed and then, then market change or different things, fluctuations happen and you, you end up crumbling because you don't have a good grasp of the underlying numbers as, uh, as uh, David said right there. I mean, you know, if, if, if 75% of your equity is trapped inside portfolios and not able to, you know, then how do you scale your business? You can't even do that because your, your money's capped at, you know, are, are trapped in your, in your equity. So yeah, that's knowing your numbers is, such a huge deal like and like if you can't if you can't measure it you can't manage it and that's just as simple as it gets yeah so um david i know on the on the profit first when you you came in and help us implement it uh in, in our business we did like almost every other entrepreneur does they pay all the expenses and then they get to keep what's left over and and what happens usually we have so many left over. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, tell us uh, about Profit First and how it works. Sure. So that's where right away I called a mentor and said, I think I'm going to like start a business to help people. And he said, have you heard of Profit First? I said, no. So I'll, this was a couple of years ago. So I downloaded that book right then, took 10 pages of notes and said, this is the framework. This is how 
I feel like investors that always dream about time freedom, financial freedom, all the freedom that they're wanting, this was the system to get them there because they can bring in the money, but everyone has trouble keeping the money, like from a management perspective. So that's where this book just, I caught that vision and said, this is what we need to do. So yeah, that I started the company Simple CFO to start helping people implement profit first and be a fractional CFO. And there's the book there because then once we started implementing it with real estate investors and seeing it work and going out to Bill's office and seeing it start to work and how they had had it set up, then I reached out to Mike McCowitz and said, I'd love to write profit first for real estate investing because real estate investing is my background. And, you know, I want to make sure to get this message out. So I think that right there, you can see it's officially out now profit first for real estate investing on Amazon. And this book is specifically tailored to the real estate investing industry. And this is to help manage the cash. And I could go into, you know, like what that really entails and what that uh, does, Bill, if you want me to do that. But the book is officially out on Amazon there. So it's just, just yeah, I don't want to give you, I don't want you to do the book on the, on the, on the air here. We, we would like people to actually purchase the book. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's basically just what it says. It's taking your profit first. And yep. frankly, if your um, expenses are too high after you've taken your profit, then you need to do what? Lower your expenses right? <laughs> or increase your revenue or both. Yeah. Well, you know what's so so funny, and David, maybe you can talk about this. I think a lot of small business owners, especially in real estate, fall into that thought process of I have to increase my expenses to increase my profit. Right. Do you, do you talk to a lot of people who who have that mindset? Yes, and it's it sounds logical, like oh, I got to spend more here to make more over here, and sometimes that is true. Like if you, but. What bothers me is that we make that from a gut feeling and not from data to be like, hey, this marketing channel does return 5x. I should pour more into this one, you know, because it's our best performing one or whatever. And usually our people are just going out there making the, the decisions, but they're not knowing if that's going to give them the actual return. That's where I like this system because it gives you immediate, it gives you immediate answers. Like we're all looking for clarity and control. I mean, that's what we want. We want the clarity and control in our business because what does that equate to? Freedom. It really equates to freedom. If you have control of your business, then you know that if I hired this person to take this off my back, I could go like Bill, you know, to uh, an event or I can be like Wendy and go do other things, you know, or whatever it might be, you know, like you get that in that, that position, but we're all looking for that clarity and control. And I think just having a system that shows you, okay, this is where your money's going. This is the this is where you should be spending it. This is how you should be managing it. Just puts that control back into your hands. Absolutely. So, what was it like to contact the author and and say to him, "Hey, I want to I want to write a version of your book, but for a specific audience." So, I'll just I'll give all my secrets away. I know if there's someone I want to be around that they've already got some mastermind or something that they're a part of and how can I provide value to them? So first thing was Mike had a group that he's a part of. So I went to that group and, be, and joined that group and he was part owner of it. So, you know, like giving him some value there. Sure. Then I went to him about a year into it and said, Hey, we're implementing this and seeing that it's actually working too. You know, that was a big thing. Social proof, being able to go to him and say, Hey, it's working with these real estate investors. My background is real estate investing. What do you think about a book for real estate investors? So that's where I contacted him via email. And, you know, after getting to know him a little bit more, so that invitation was a little bit more open. So sure. then I went to him, got in, got a meeting with him. And then we talked about the book and he was like, yeah, he's like, I've been to Collective Genius and I've like actually gone to some of these events. And I think a book for the real estate investing world is great. So that's that's what it was like contacting him. And then from there, just working closely with him on, you know, the writing process and that type of stuff as well, too. Yeah, because it was pretty cool. He was a keynote speaker at Collective Genius um, at, at one of the events. And then yep. he was also a keynote speaker at uh, Freedom Founders as well. Yeah. And um uh, it, it frankly it works for any business you just have to tweak it a little for you know specific businesses exactly uh but it it really is um remarkable of 
we should know this. That's what's so funny about it. Right? Right. We, we should all know this stuff. It makes sense. But it, as entrepreneurs, we, we tend to not think that way. We we're just moving forward and we're, especially at the beginning, we're, we're just trying to stay afloat. Right. Uh, uh, till we, <laughs> till we find our direction. And I get that all the time. Like people feel bad. Like I shouldn't know this or they're embarrassed. Like, cause I have, I literally after this, I have two calls with investors that want to, you know, like potentially work with us. And I know at least one of them is going to be embarrassed to talk about where they are right now financially. And yeah. just talking about that because most people, like you just said, Bill, that they feel they feel like they shouldn't know this. But where do we get any financial training at all from a just very bare bones, basic perspective of like personal finances, balancing a checkbook? But what about balancing your business's money and like the cash that flows through there, which is much more complex than just your finances at home? So it's like, where do we get that training? So that's where until there was this framework in this system, people kind of, you know, had their own things or if they hired a great CPA and could like really understand and could walk them through and not just speak CPA garbage <laughs> language, you know, and like actually talk on the entrepreneur's level that, you know, of where they're coming from instead of just their jargon, then there wasn't that system. So I always tell people, don't feel bad, like where you are, but now there's a system out there that can help you. Like, that talks about sales and expenses, not, not not profit and loss balance sheet, not like crazy terms or like things that you might want to, um, you know, that you might shut down from a CPA. <laughs> well, being around these groups again, I keep harping on it. You need to be in a mastermind, yeah. but top notch business people understand where their weaknesses are. Yeah. And they either try to improve on those weaknesses by getting coaching or they hire people that like and understand the parts that they're weak at and they hire those folks. And yep. um, you, yes, you're going to be embarrassed, but you, you get over it. That's why you're there. You try and hire people that are smarter than you. That's why, that's why uh, Jonathan works for us and is now a partner because he's smarter than me and I don't have to do as much work now. <laughs> there you go. That's where, and yeah, you don't have to be embarrassed. We don't get this training unless you are one of the few accountant turned entrepreneurs, which there aren't, there's a few and far between, but yeah, usually their, like their risk level tolerance isn't, isn't high enough to make right. that switch. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, and I get it. So yeah, totally understand. So, um, when was the official launch? What is today? The ninth, it was the seventh Tuesday. So oh, wow. just a few days ago was the official launch. It was an incredible launch, had a lot of pre-orders of the book and it's getting out there. So I'm just very excited about where this is going and just if we can help save real estate investors from not having money and just making sure that they actually keep more of it. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, uh, you know, you all alluded that you know, there were some tweaks that had to be made uh, for real estate from the, from the previous version. Yeah. Can you, can you kind of expand on like maybe one or two key sure. uh, points that, that differentiate this from, you know, from the profits first, you know, generally. Yeah. So the original book talks about bank accounts. That's one of the main practical steps is setting up specific bank accounts. So you don't just have the one of the biggest mistakes entrepreneurs in general, real estate investors included, is having one big account where all income goes in, all expenses go out. You feel like a king one day and you feel like a pauper the next, you know, king or queen one day. So that way, because we just have the money always flowing and you don't feel in control ever of your money. That's where in this book, we talk about splitting up the accounts to specific areas like profit and paying yourself and taxes and, you know, like your actual operational expenses, some core accounts that you build out and you set up inside of your business. But in the real, so I still talk about that in the real estate version and those fundamental accounts because they are fundamental. But then from there, I give specific real estate ones like OPM. If you're taking Carolina Capital Management or if you're taking hard money, private money, bank money, whatever, you should have an account that's different from your operational money, like to run your business. You should have a different account. So that way it's, that's just for the projects. See if you're going over budget, you know, under budget, whatever. So that way, you know, that money is not being mixed in and you're creating an unintentional Ponzi scheme. You know, so making sure you're saving yourself from that. So that's one big thing I talk about in there. I also talk about one other quick thing, reserves. Reserves help grow your company. 
making sure you're scaling. And I think Jonathan and Bill, you're talking about this, how Jonathan feels like you're not just growing to grow. We're scaling profitably. We're scaling at a, at a rate where, yeah, we might take a dip in our profitability, but at least we know we still have it. And we've made the conscientious decision to grow and say, okay, some of these percentage points are to now hire this person who's going to take care of this and going to get us to this next level. So being able to, you, you know, reserves help you grow. Another big thing I say about reserves too is most entrepreneurs, real estate investors live deal to deal. That's just the, the fact month to month, paycheck to paycheck, you know, just those types of things. We carry a lot of those habits over once we become entrepreneurs, if we don't have, if we're not conservative or we're not, we aren't saving already. And that's where reserves help you not to, not to live deal to deal by saying, yeah, I don't need that next deal. That next deal that comes across my plate with the slim margins. And like, I have to do some creative stuff here just to make the, just to make it work. That way you don't have to take those. You're able to make decisions from your purpose and not from fear, meaning like I don't have to have this and put myself as a motivated seller or buyer now, you know, and I can now just take a step back and say, okay, where do I need to deploy this? How can I get that next deal? Is it good for us as a business? I talked to several other different things inside there about reserves. I talk about the real estate rhythms because like in the original book, Mike talks about making transfers to the accounts on like the 10th and 25th. Real estate investing is a whole nother ball game of like when you do, you know, like when income comes in. So I talk about that in depth on the types of businesses that, you know, real estate investing businesses. So those are a couple of the things that make this one different from the original book. Absolutely. No. And, and you, I mean, like since, since you came out and, and visited us and kind of went through stuff with us, I mean, we, you know, just like you said, reserves, It'll, it has allowed us, we're more picky and choosy with what we hmm. do on our loans. And we can yeah. be because we don't need, we don't need every loan to come through. We don't, you know, so like, you know, our, you know, our average loan profile has actually increased since, since you, you came in and spent that time with us. So it's, it's been a, it's been a life, uh, life changer for us and for the company. So uh, definitely, definitely uh, agree with what you just said. Yeah. Appreciate well, it. One of the things that we know what's going on in the real estate industry right now, it's getting very crowded. It's already a crowded space, but it's getting even more crowded. And then you have institutional uh, investors that are uh, pushing their way in here and they're getting higher and higher market share. And if you want to survive being one of the little people like we are, uh, you're going to have to have that edge. So yeah. uh, let's, uh, let, let's pull that link up again for the uh, Amazon book. And if you guys would like to uh, work with David directly, his link is over here in the uh, chat side, simplecfosolutions.com. But I encourage everyone to buy the book first, profit first for real estate investing. Uh, get the book, get the concepts, uh, uh, but you can work directly with uh, David as a consultant as well at simplecfosolutions.com. Uh, I recommend him highly. He's uh, helped us out quite a bit, as uh, you can tell by uh, Jonathan's smiling face, because <laughs> Jonathan is definitely a numbers guy. Uh, and uh, he, he really appreciated what uh, uh, David has helped us with. Yeah, it's, and it's such a simple idea, but it's one, like we talked about, that like just gets like glossed over by most people. Like, yep. It's like, wait, I can choose how much profit I want to make and <laughs> then, and then move and scale my business around that. Like, cause most people, they, it's like the, the opposite. It's like, we'll just grow and grow until we hit the profit we want to hit. It's like set the profit, maintain that profit, know what it is, know what, what you want and then build around it. So, I mean, you, you would think that's very intuitive for most people, but it, I mean, it, it really wasn't. I mean, it, not even for me. I was like, oh, wait, we get to choose this. That's awesome. You're right. Gives you that margin of safety, too. I yeah. mean, you know, like if something does happen again, 2007 or eight or like whatever, I tell people it doesn't have to be 2007 or eight. What about a personal crash? Like what if something happens inside of your personal life? And, yeah. you know, if your business is a mess and you're stressed there and then you add this, then goodbye business. You know, it's like yeah. hey, we know what's going to happen. So it gives you that margin of safety too to be like, I can breathe a little bit here. 
Yeah. And, and when, you know, when COVID, when COVID first hit, uh, you know, we, we probably, we, uh, if I can talk our 2020 profits, not profits, I'm sorry, business just overall was reduced by about 30%, hmm. but we were more profitable that year than the year prior. Hmm. because we, you know, we had followed what, what you had outlined for us. And I mean, it was amazing. I mean, we could still lose business and still maintain the profit margins that we wanted. It's incredible what you focus yeah. on expands. And that's uh -huh. where I, what you said, Jonathan, about it being, you know, once you focused on that, then it happens, you know, and that's where it seems like it should be intuitive for people, but it is, it, it's usually, build, 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 scale, scale, scale. Hopefully I get the profit and then crash burn. You know, <laughs> exactly. Here we go again. So, Yeah. Larry touched on some of this yesterday about uh, being consistent in your business uh, to help you maintain uh, not just your sanity, but, you know, we've always thought that you had to work hard to uh, be successful and it's not about working hard. It's about being smart at working and being, being consistent and have that consistent level. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, what, one of the things that will make you consistent is understanding your numbers mm -hmm. and what it takes to get you satisfaction for you, your clients, your family, and your team. Yes. And, uh, yep. It's, uh, it, it's amazing. David, thank you so much for, for joining us today. Uh, Thanks for having I, me. I appreciate it. You've, you've been on before. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I, got you back on again because you're an awesome guest and your content is very valuable to the folks that uh, listen to our show. No, thank you very much for having me. It's always a pleasure being here. Hopefully Wendy's here next time too, because I really like Wendy too. So. Yeah. Um, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll beat on her next time to make sure she gets here. Awesome. Good. Um, again, folks, uh, simplecfo.com. Is that correct? Simple, simple CFO solutions. I believe. Oh, simple CFO solutions dot com it's still over there in the in the chat um and then again uh the book is uh, profit first for real estate investors uh get it on amazon get that thing to be a number one bestseller i want to i want to see that smile on his face a little bit bigger there you go <laughs> <laughs> folks thank you uh once again for joining us on the real estate investor show hard money for real estate investors uh, we are carolina capital management and uh, we are lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors. So if you're interested in borrowing money from us, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you are a passive investor and you're looking for passive returns, go to carolinahardmoney.com again and click on the uh, accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell. And we have a, uh, show coming up at one o'clock as well. So uh, that link is on the, uh, in the chat and don't forget to sub uh, share, subscribe, hit the bell, like us, all that good stuff. We will see you in 30 minutes or we will see you next week. <laughs>